My name is Jeff Borer. I'm uh, from State University of New York Downstate Medical Center. My uh, subject at this meeting uh, was the uh, relative effect of um, three non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, the COX-2 selective celecoxib and the non-selective naproxen and ibuprofen uh, on blood pressure response. The reason that we did this study was uh, as a sub-study of the larger precision trial, uh, which I discussed last year at the meetings, uh, was that <clears throat> the underlying uh, hypothesis for precision was that Celebrex salicoxib was not inferior uh, to um, uh, to uh, ibuprofen and naproxen in terms of cardiovascular effects, uh, assuming that it was equivalent in uh, anti-inflammatory and anti-arthritis effects. The sub-study that I reported this year uh, was based on our belief that, the, that any difference that was found in adverse cardiovascular effects of the three drugs was due to differential effects on blood pressure. All non-steroidals are known to affect blood pressure, generally to increase blood pressure. Um, but we had reason to believe that celecoxib was less, had less of an effect of this sort than, than the non-selective anti-inflammatory drugs. Uh, <clears throat> the reason that this became an issue was that another hypothesis had been put forth at a time when it was believed that the uh, COX-2 selective NSAIDs actually had adverse cardiovascular effects. Uh, and that was called the Fitzgerald hypothesis after Garrett Fitzgerald of the University of Pennsylvania who developed the, this theory uh, that because COX-2 selectives blocked uh, COX, uh, COX-2, it left COX-1 unblocked and therefore led to an imbalance in the formation of thromboxane, which would tend to cause coronary uh, obstruction, uh, versus COX-2, which would tend to prevent coronary obstruction. Uh, we performed this study in m more than 400 patients who were part of the 25,000 patient uh, group that, that was studied in the precision trial as a whole. A uh, certain, uh, uh, certain randomly selected subpopulation entered a 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure monitoring assessment uh, to determine what, what, uh, what was the difference in average systolic blood pressure four months after the onset of treatment compared with baseline before treatment. What we found was that Celebrex over four months had virtually no effect on blood pressure, whereas uh, uh, ibuprofen caused a three and a half millimeter average increase in systolic blood pressure, and naproxen uh, caused an average one and a half millimeter uh, increase in systolic blood pressure over baseline. The magnitude of the change in blood pressure, certainly with ibuprofen, was sufficient to explain adverse cardiovascular events based on epidemiological studies. Uh, so we looked at what happened to the people, the 400 and some odd people who actually uh, had sufficient information so that we could do the analysis that we performed. And we found <coughs> that um, uh, indeed more, pe more people on uh, ibuprofen and naproxen developed new onset hypertension during the study than on Celebrex. Very few on Celebrex did this. Uh, we also found that there was a significantly greater likelihood of admission to hospital for new onset hypertension and its sequelae on ibuprofen uh, and on the proxen than on Celebrex. Uh, the, um, ultimately, uh, when we look back at the totality of the precision data, uh, it was clear that uh, in terms of total mortality, all-cause mortality. Celecoxib had significantly less all-cause mortality associated with it than ibuprofen and tended to be less than, uh, than naproxen. Uh, the differences 
were directionally similar but not statistically significant for cardiovascular death, that is, with celecoxib, uh, having fewer uh, cardiovascular deaths than either ibuprofen or naproxen. So we concluded from this that uh, that uh, Celebrex, far from being uh, uh, harmful in terms of cardiovascular events in people with uh, arthritis, uh, that uh, it was less harmful than ibuprofen and tended to be less harmful than naproxen, and therefore probably should be used far more often than it is. I should point out that the people in whom this study were done uh, were patients who had arthritis, either rheumatoid or more likely osteoarthritis, that required some uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory treatment and who also had known coronary artery disease or were at high risk for coronary disease. So in these arthritic patients with coronary disease or at high risk for coronary disease, celecoxib did not increase adverse cardiac events, rather it reduced them. Uh, and that was our conclusion, and that we think that that's an important thing for clinicians to know as they select non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for their patients.